Are you trying to add Wi-Fi to your next product? There are way too many options out there. Let me show you what we did. Wi-Fi modules. What are Wi-Fi modules? It's basically a circuit that has a processor of some sort and some wireless Wi-Fi circuitry and all the software goes on that uh, circuit. Why so? Uh, Wi-Fi is pretty complex. It's made to stream video, to have hundreds and thousands of nodes connected to, into an infrastructure. It's not really made for embedded systems, but technology have uh, on microcontrollers and embedded systems have improved now, now that to the point that small circuit can now handle Wi-Fi. Or it did a few years back, but then Wi-Fi modules were 100 over a hundred dollar uh, price range and they didn't work quite well. Uh, newer Wi-Fi modules price has start coming down and we start seeing Wi-Fi modules in the ten dollars even sub ten dollars and I'll get to that in a second. Now why not just buy the chip and do that yourself? Well even if you found a Wi-Fi chip and the company that made the chip are willing to share their software with you, which is probably going to be very hard to find unless you are a very large company. Um, if they're sharing the code with you, you still have to certify your design. And that's a very expensive, a very complex process. You're looking at about $100,000 from the day your design is finished to the day you're, you're FCC certified and Wi-Fi certified. Now there are companies that do that and for them it work because they are creating a module. It's a small circuit so on over here on this circuit this will be this part right here or on the brain pad we also have another Wi-Fi module and it's the circuit up here. It's easier to see on this one because it's the blue and then there's this uh, metal on top. Now most Wi-Fi modules are shielded and that's why we love these designs. You get the Wi-Fi module that's already been designed and tested, went through FCC, went through Wi-Fi certification, whatever other certifications it needs to go to. Uh, you wouldn't necessarily care what it went through, all you need to know that it's, it's properly made and it's certified. And then when you pay, let's say $10 for the module, part of that money you're paying goes towards the whatever um, R&D went into the design and into certifying that Wi-Fi module. Now your end product still needs to be certified, but once you have an FCC ID for that Wi-Fi module, that particular piece it doesn't need to be retested. So you still have to go through FCC and other testing and whatever needs to be done and depending on your um, country and your uh, or market. But at, at least for the Wi-Fi part, you don't have to do that. That is done by the Wi-Fi module. So we're done with that part. You're not going to get a chip, you're going to get a Wi-Fi module. Unless you're, you're going to make millions of something. You're some cell phone manufacturer and you need X million of a chip. That would be totally different from what we're talking about today. So now for Wi-Fi modules, there are so many Wi-Fi modules today. This is beautiful. I love this because a few years back this was very hard. You had only two or three options and they were way too costly. Now we're talking about $10 Wi-Fi modules. That is, that is truly amazing in the embedded world. Some Wi-Fi modules can be programmed. Some of them cannot be programmed. They have, uh, you would send them serial commands and they respond to these commands executing something. So you give it an SSE ID and you say here this is the SSE ID, SSID you're connecting to, here is my password and then the Wi-Fi module, module automatically connects to the network etc etc. Now this also has been improved uh, from before. Now Wi-Fi modules even though you're sending them commands you can have multiple connections. This wasn't possible before. So now through these commands you can have like two or three connections. They're usually very limited still three or four or six. Remember, we're talking about an embedded system. So let's say you have a microwave that you can connect to from your phone. How many people need to connect to your microwave at the same time to turn it on or check the status if it's done or not? One, two, three, four. You still don't need a handful. You don't need hundreds of people connecting to your embedded system. So um, looking at the different options out there, and I'm not endorsing anybody by any means. This is what us for us worked for us there are many options out there i invite you to go browse around and see what are uh, the the options available but for us it came down to two options 
the Wi-Fi module from ST Micro will list a uh, part number down, so you, uh, so it's easier for you to find the module. And it's this one that is it's on the clickboard on the brain pad. It's this module right up here, and then also the Wi-Fi modules by Espressif. Uh, it's ESP something the part number there are two versions there is this original version which is like three dollar for the module which is truly amazing but then it's an 8-bit micro it's very limited it does have secure networking it does have SSL we tested it we got it working we actually got it connected to Azure we're probably the only people on earth that had uh, the ESP the old version 8266 if I'm not mistaken or list the part number we had it connect to Azure over SSL so great job uh, to our team but then there were so many limitations we decided not to go um, forward with it and Espresso came out with a new one it's ESP32 that one has uh, I think even two processors not just one two 32-bit processors it has a lot of RAM and does um, not just networking, it does secure networking better than uh, the old one. So which one do we pick? This has been the challenge and we have been debating and going back and forth for about three or four months. So this was a very hard work. We actually have made products and we pulled them off the production line the last second because we decided we're gonna switch one more time. Who's the winner? Well, I'll let you decide, but this is what we came up with. Uh, when you're comparing one to one, the ESP32, it has Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, and it's programmable, and it's for the Wi-Fi module itself. Now, it's a module certified, supposedly certified, that's why we've been, uh, we've been told through the internet, it's very hard to get documentation, uh, proper documentation from China, but it is around $6. We actually found it for $4. We bought a few samples. I haven't tested them. I don't know if they really work, if they're really the original ones or not coming from China. And they're $4. That's, it sounds really suspicious. But we get few. We want to try them out. And the other one, the one by my ST, it's around $10 range. And it doesn't have Bluetooth. And it's not programmable. Now, the obvious choice would be just looking at it. OK, I'll just use the the Chinese one, the, yes, the Espressif one, because it has Bluetooth, and I will say $4. That's cost $4. On the retail, that's gonna be a big deal, $4. That's gonna go multiply by three, at least. Uh, so let's go with, uh, with Espressif, and that's what we did. So now we put Espressif on a circuit, and we started working with the circuit. Now, it is programmable, which is nice if you're building a really, really small sensors. Uh, it's even supported by Arduino, if you know what that is. So you have a free IDE, you can get that and start loading your program right on the Wi-Fi module and execute it right, right on there. But this fits very, very small end sensors kind of products. And that's what, that's what we're going after. We want something with more, more power behind it, like tiny CLR, for example, behind it, or, or embed, or something else behind it. So there is a microcontroller that you're programming with your favorite language. You're not tied in with the, whatever operating system you, they use, and you have to still load their Wi-Fi libraries and worry about, about all that. Now. Because this is focused on a commercial customer. This is not a hobby project. So keep that in mind when, I, uh, when, you, when you look into a Wi-Fi uh, or a, a design. Uh, you, you have to know what your end goals are and who your target uh, audience is or what are you trying to create. Now, it's, the AT command is open source. They have some AT commands, which is the command you use to talk to the Wi-Fi module. And we got those, the AT command, it's not done yet, it's still in beta, so things might, well not very good, will get better, I'm sure, when this becomes into release. The AT command did not include Bluetooth, so even though we have Bluetooth, I couldn't use Bluetooth. Now we have to add our own commands to control Bluetooth. And then, um, all that was okay, it's something we can work with, we can work around, and then it came to firmware update. And there is over-the-air firmware update, and the, there's documentation, but there's no documentation. It was, a, it was not a pleasant experience. Now, I hope this will get better because of the low cost. I really hope the documentation will get better, and I'm sure it will. So don't watch this video a year from now and make a decision based on what I'm saying today. Um, things were not very fr uh, friendly um, 
at least for me when I looked at it in, in the team over here. Now with ST, uh, ST has been known for their quality when it comes to their documentation. Uh, we get the ST module, try it out, it worked quite well, and then we still didn't, we just still didn't go with ST, we still went with uh, Espressif on the design. And then um, on another product that we are working on, uh, we wanted to test the ST some more. So I tested the ST and just going through the documentation and doing the firmware update, which is a big deal for Wi-Fi module, you will need to do a firmware update. There will always be an improvement. This is a small system. Security, that's a big deal. Um, so for security reasons or for quality reasons, firmware update has to be something you test, no matter what Wi-Fi module you get. I highly recommend you test and field update. Make sure it works, works flawlessly, and it fits your need. Now with, uh, with ST, it's locked. So you get the commands from them. You cannot change those commands, which is a good thing in a commercial design. Now, if you're working on, like if you enjoy open source and you enjoy the other side of this equation, uh, this may be a problem. But for, for our need, for our commercial customers' needs, not worrying about two firmwares, the customer firmware and the Wi-Fi firmware, and you have two pieces and you have to make sure they're compatible, it's just, it's just not a pleasant experience. So for our needs, not having a secondary firmware, not being able to program the ST module, that is, that is a good thing. Even if they gave us the option that I don't want that. Just give me something that works and works every time. So with these commands, very easily I was able to initialize the network. Uh, it, something that was a bit confusing to me when you send commands, the commands don't take effect. That's how the ST chip work, like on the ESPRESSIF, you send the command like uh, with the uh, SSID and the network and it connects automatically. With the ST module, this is not how it works. So I sent them and then nothing happened. I did not understand what's happening. And I reset the module and still nothing happened. And then I checked my settings, my settings reverted back. And then I found this command that will resave the settings. So I tried that and everything worked. So it turned out that on the ST module, you have to send the commands like all the, uh, your SSID and all the network information, and then send the save command that saves like AT and W for write, I guess the W is for write. Uh, you send that command, and then from there, all the information is recorded internally still not taking effect, you have to reset, which you can reset by software. You don't have to ha do a hard reset. You can send a reset command. And then when the Wi-Fi module resets, it knows what can, uh, which network to connect to. So that was different between the two modules. And then from that point, um, they're very similar, the commands. Uh, but I like the fact that I cannot program it, so I don't have to worry about it. And if there is a problem, I'm not asked to go fix the code. I'll just go to ST and they have to worry about that and fix that for us. And the last piece is the firmware update. The firmware update on Espresso, I had to do it manually. I had to connect a serial port, another cable. It, it was, and then the tool they have, it's... I did not enjoy it at all. So I, I'm sorry, Espresso. So please, you have a beautiful module. It's very cheap. Fix it. Fix the documentation. Please, I beg you. Now, going back to ST, everything is well documented, it's clear. Uh, and then for, to update the firmware, I sent a command that is one line. I grabbed the firmware from ST, put it on our server somewhere. You can put it anywhere in the internet. And then once your Wi-Fi module is connected to the internet, now you can do update through a serial port. You don't have to do over the air which over there is supported by Espressif. So don't come yelling at me telling me, well, Espressif does this and that. Yes, it's a great module and it does over the air. This is my personal experience. So with Wi-Fi, over the air, one command, just tell it where the file is. And you see it rolling, it's, uh, it downloads a file on a secondary part of the flash memory. And then you send it a command saying, okay, go. And then if it's transferred that secondary memory because you may end up losing uh, like network while you're downloading the file. So it doesn't download it onto the firmware yet. It puts it on the side. So the firmware is downloaded on the side. When you have the entire firmware, you can say update, and this step will transfer that file into the main region, and now the Wi-Fi module is, is updated. Uh, over here, I have a quick demo. So for all this evaluation, I went with uh, Microelectronica click modules uh, because, by the way, they have just announced that they have over 300 now. They have just announced their 300th uh, click module, which is e-ink, I think it's what's called display. It's a display that you draw on it, but then if you disconnect power, the display doesn't 
lose widths on screen. I don't know how that works, but it's amazing. So imagine you draw something on the screen and then you completely shut off to the screen, zero power, and you still have the screen showing what you have shown last. Anyway, back to Wi-Fi. Uh, I've used Click because they happen to have the uh, Espressif module, they have the, the ST module, so I can quickly, these are the two clicks, and brain pad, of course. You gotta have a brain pad. You don't have a brain pad yet? You should get one. It's not for sale, but very soon. Uh, so a brain pad, uh, it has the click connections, so I have, um, I'm e I can quickly add, plug in whatever modules. Uh, Macro Electronica happen to have uh, them in a click format. If not, I can also stick wires in the brain pad, but in this case, it was pretty easy. So I can plug them in and evaluate them that way. Uh, in this example right here, let me show you what I have. I have connected this to our uh, local network. One great thing about using Wi-Fi versus using Bluetooth is that Wi-Fi or TCP IP, the network, the stack behind Wi-Fi is, has been around for a very long time and there are so many applications and things that you can use without going anything anywhere specific. So you can, for example, use Telnet and that's what I'm using here. Download the Telnet app on any operating system or on your PC or a phone or any device for that matter. It probably has a, if, it's, if it has an operating system behind it, there is a Telnet uh, app that you can uh, download. So with Telnet, you can create a, um, a connection to this Wi-Fi module, for example, here. So I, I am connected and I have programmed this with like a really simple uh, application. So if I send go left GL, the servo will go left. Joe, go right, it will go right. If I write something that doesn't understand, it will just show it on the screen. Actually shows all commands on the screen. So if I say, hello, uh, talk, talk. And that shows on the uh, screen. I hope you enjoyed this video and you're gonna get Wi-Fi and start using it on your next product. Telnet, TCP IP. We'll see you next week.